with the rise of Azure Lane anime and the PS4 Crosswave game, there is going to be a surge of new players coming into the realm Azure Lane for mobile devices. I haven't updated or put much effort into my other guys recently since my Monarch won back in May, so this is a good opportunity for me to create an updated guide for all players new or old. Back in the day, my knowledge of the game was very minuscule compared to what I know as of right now, so I'll be giving you guys a 100% of my knowledge about the game and ways on improving your gameplay so you can build your ship boot that you love so dearly very much. To keep this one brief, there are numerous ways to obtain ships, gacha building, exchange shops, and farming. Limited ones for special events are mostly obtained through gachas with being able to obtain some by farming or the point shop as well. Best way to go about ships as a new player is to build gacha in special and heavy because these two yield some of the quote unquote stronger ships and build light if you want a specific character if you finished up special and heavy or if you want to save some cubes and coins by doing just one build a day in light to maximize your efficiency. Cubes are the prime resource when building gacha ships with special heavy and event builds using two cubes and 1500 coins each and light using one cube and 600 coins each. Cubes are obtained primarily from commissions, daily missions, and event milestones. Me personally, my advice for all new players is to do a very little of each build. The special, the heavy, the light, a little bit of everything. But don't go too far into these gadgets as a new player. If you do not specifically, specifically want to ship. The reason why is because uh, limited event gadgets are shared the same pool as some of these special and heavy gadgets. So by building during these limited events, you may also have a chance to get the ships in these special and heavy gadgets as well. Also, it's best to do three builds a day for these so you don't waste unnecessary cubes and coins for events. If needed, go all in on the last two or three days. Although I've been guilty of doing this many, many times, do not take my example at all. Each specific ship has their own timer, so you can predetermine what ship you may get by looking at the time that is given to you and looking it up at this website. However, be aware that some ships share the same timers as other ships, so it may not be exactly what you're expecting. Drills are used to speed up these timers rather than having to wait, so feel free to use these whenever possible because you get a lot of them from your daily missions and commissions. Ships are your characters that you use for sorties in this game. A sortie is basically a combat or an attack used on other ships or other enemies in the game. In a fleet, you can place up to three ships in the back and three ships in the front maximum. However, you can place less for oil efficiency, which I will discuss later on in this video. Ships are categorized in many, many ways. However, generally, they are labeled as the three following. Destroyers, DD. Light Cruisers, CL. Heavy Cruisers, CA. Carriers, CV. And Battleships and battle cruisers BB. And BC. There are no composition that is absolute in PvE, although PvP is a different story. So feel free to build a fleet however you like, and ships gain EXP from sorties, dorms, commissions, and lecture hall. Once a ship hits their limit, they must undergo a limit break to increase their level cap. This can easily be done by either a duplicate ship of the exact same one, or a bullion of an elite or SR tier. Once a ship hits their max limit break and have ascended to level 100, they can go beyond what is that called an awakening. An awakening is simply increase the level cap further by 4 more times, 5 levels each time. And to awaken, you just simply tap the EX bar where it flashes and awaken, and it only costs some coins and some core data, which are mainly obtained through daily raids. The level cap as of right now is 120, and do not worry about wasting EXP once a ship hits their level limit. They can accumulate EXP post their cap once they are above level 100, and skills can be leveled up through the tactical class, 
and there are three types of skill books offense support and defense as well as three tiers which are the blue the purple and the gold tier by using a skill book that is the exact same as the one you're leveling up you get an additional 150 percent more bonus exp so you can think of it as another book and a half when you're skilling up with the same type also you can craft blue books into purple books however you cannot craft purple books into gold books Stats are generally very easy to understand in this game, aside from luck being one of the less aware of. So, for general definitions, here they are. Health, which is the HP of this game, very easy to understand. Reload, which is the fire rate and the cooldown reduction of a ship's guns slash planes. Firepower, your ship's damage. Torpedo, damage dealt with torpedoes. Evasion, chance to dodge enemy attacks. Anti-air, damage dealt to enemy planes. Aviation, damage dealt with your planes. Cost, how much oil your ship will cost for a sortie. Anti-submarine warfare, your submarine's damage. And luck, which is increases your critical strike, chance to dodge, and accuracy. There are four specific stats you can raise from fusing fodder ships into the ship of your focus. In the enhanced tab, the four stats that are available are firepower, torpedo, aviation, and reload. If it's grayed out, that means the ship cannot uh, be leveled up in that specific stat but the ones in colored can. Different fodder ships can provide different stats. BBs give more firepower. Uh, CLs and CAs give more reload. DDs give more torpedo stats. And CV gives more aviation stats. You should only enhance with common ships for they are not worth anything of retirement, which is where you sell the ships for coins and oil and gear. However, uncommon, elite, and super rare ships give medals on retirements so save those for retirement and don't use them for fodder ships because medals are used for exchange shops which can get you some nice nice things the mood is a ship's sentiments towards you if they are sparkling green then they gain a bonus exp if they are naturally green no exp is gained but affinity can still be obtained orange means no exp or affinity can be obtained and red means affinity will be dropped in sorties and exp is cut in half the two most important resources in this game go hand in hand with each other and they're called oil and coins. Oil is used for sorties known as stamina or energy in other games. However, it is very unique in Azure Lane because it's not fixed on how much oil you used in combat. You determine how much you use because each ship costs a certain amount of oil to use. Whether that is 6 oil or 70 oils for a fleet, that is up to your discretion. Coins is the most important resource in this game because it is used in almost everything that is needed for progression. You obtain most of them through daily raids and commissions. However, farming certain maps also use a, certain, a lot of coins as well. For beginners, 2-1 is a great map that you can farm for a lot of coins. If you have oil and if you have a lot of time as well. If you are way past that, 7-2 and 7-3 are also great maps. However, 7-2 is generally better because of how that map is designed. I've made a guide on this about a year ago on how to obtain gear the best way. Although it is a little bit outdated, I still recommend that for new players to go ahead and watch it because it explains everything thoroughly on how to obtain gear at the fastest rate possible. In this game, gear is the best and most important true aspect of how to get power for a ship. Gear determines how strong your shifus are and how their performance will be based on the type of gear you give them. For gear min maxing, I'll leave it to the other guys out there that explains thoroughly on how some gear may be, but we will be talking about how to get gear in this part of the video. As a new player, the best way to get gear is through opening boxes. There's just no other way to get it very fast and very effectively. Yes, this is still the best way to get guns. You may not get the best gear you want, nor maybe best in slot, but it'll give you something to be used for the time being that is not your default gun. Once you've gotten some gear on all your ships, then it's time to move on to the next step. Start by farming maps that give gear that is straight upgrade from your current gear, but, but also give something else that works farming as well. This is the biggest factor here. Never, and I mean never, farm a map if you only true desire is for that gear alone it will be leaving you in tears and it's not very efficient as well you gotta utilize how much oil you get per day into these maps because it'll save you time in the long run and you can spend that time on grinding for other things such as ships or spending it using on the fixed oil commissions that you get in the game 
or if you do not have the time, that oil can be spent on dorm food, which is also more useful than grinding a map just for a gear piece because these things are heavily RNG. Not to mention these drop rates from these bosses are extremely low, especially for SSR tier gear prints. That's why I do not recommend grinding for these as a primary objective. Here's a list of maps I've marked that I feel are very good for you to farm. is isn't just purely for good gear, it's for other incentives that are useful to you as well. Upgrading gear takes parts that are available in this game that you can farm from almost any map. Uh, from plus 1 to plus 3 it costs white parts, plus 4 to plus 6 costs blue parts, and plus 7 to plus 10 costs purple parts, while having to pay coins as well on top of each upgrade. White and blue parts can be up farmed from world 1 through 5, and purple plates are located from world 6 and up. For events, a good rule of thumb are enemy fleets below level 60 will drop blue parts, and enemy fleets below, uh, above level 60 will drop purple parts. I've also made a guide for this about a year ago, and nothing has changed on it specifically, so I advise you guys to go ahead and watch that because it's pretty in-depth on the best types of commissions to do and how to go about doing them. Basically, depending on what your needs are, you want to focus on commissions that give oils, coins, and cubes primarily, Every, everything else second. Also keep in mind that there's a trick I've been doing for about a year now called commission saving. Basically, it's a trick where you save a good amount of missions that you have available before reset, because at reset time is when all the commissions are wiped, therefore you do not get to save them. This strategy is basically just a min-max for players that want a little bit more resource each day that are willing to go the extra mile. Once again, it's covered in my Commission Warrior video, so feel free to watch that for more explanation. This is the daily missions that every player should stay on top of because it yields a lot of coins. Each raid is available 3 times a day on rotation with tactical training being available 3 times every day and supply line available twice a week. Fierce Assault gives gearboxes. Escort missions give parts, advanced missions give skill books, tactical training gives you cognitive chips, and supply line gives you parts and submarine gear prints. As always suggested, do your best to rush level 70 as soon as possible because the higher commander level is, the higher the raid difficulty is, thus yielding better rewards. At level 70 is where you should get the max rewards, with the exception, I believe, of submarine, which is 75. But you don't need to worry about that too much. Just get the 70. That's the biggest concern. If you're a current or going to be a constant gem buyer, then this isn't a big concern for you. So feel free to skip it if you'd like. However, if you're a free to play or a low spender, then here is my take on the best usage of gems. First one being dorm slots, second one being dock space, third one being second floor, and fourth being rings, skins, and extended tactical class slots. You want more dorm slots as soon as possible, because dorm is a passive way for you to gain EXP for ships when you are and are not playing the game. It is also a way for you to regenerate morale for ships, although it is not as fast as the second floor's morale regeneration. Dock space should also be a second priority once you cap your dorm slots, because there is a lot of ships in this game, and if you are a collector and want as many ships as possible, you're going to need the dock space. And you can never go wrong with this option. Second floor is when it becomes more optional. If you are a constant grinder, then this is well worth the investment because the extra 5 slots once you cap the first floor gives you a boosted morale regeneration. It gives 50 morale an hour versus the 40 you get on the first floor, with a ship's maximum morale being at 150. So in 3 hours tops from 0 morale, it is back to full. The rest of these are optional, rings are if you like a ship and want to marry it or want to increase the performance by giving that ship 6% more stats, skins does really nothing and are purely for cosmetics, and tactical class slot isn't a huge itch issue unless you are in a rush to get a lot of ships skilled up as soon as possible, but you're most likely going to run out of red books so it doesn't really matter. This is the area where all extra features of the game are located. Munition shop is a good place for you to buy books and gearboxes if you need them. Tactical class is where you train your ships to gain levels on their skills. Lecture hall is another alternative to leveling up ships through passive accumulated EXP. Cattery is for cats that provide additional stat boosts, but if you are a new player, I wouldn't recommend focusing on these as of yet. 
and canteen and merchant is where you collect passive oil and coins and I highly recommend you maxing these out as soon as possible once your commander level reaches level 80. And medallion is just a place for personal achievements and that's where they're located. This is where you go for PvP. Although there isn't much to do here aside from farming some points to buy from the merit shop and for free EXP for your ships, it's a nice feature for those that want to use all out fleets without the cost of having to pay out a lot of oil. So feel free to PvP whenever you like. You get a maximum of 15 attempts per day. Retrofits are available to some ships as an extended evolution beyond their current state. They gain an additional limit break, huge stat boots, and usually gain one additional skill to their arsenal. To retrofit a ship, click the retrofit button that should be located if the ship has it. Then go through all the pathways and upgrade all of them until the ship is completed. These upgrades cost coins, parts, and blueprints. Blueprints can be obtained primarily by doing hard mode and sometimes through the exchange shops. Hard mode is available three times a day and should be worked on as soon as possible so you can stay on top of collecting the prints. Every player should be doing the highest difficulty world they can do consistently and slowly move up until they hit the current end game hard mode world. Each world is split into four parts with each part giving a specific blueprint. X1 gives DD prints, X2 gives cruiser prints, X3 gives battleship prints, and X4 gives carrier prints. Pick the ones you need and farm it every day. My advice for players that want to min-max that are progressing into the mid game is once you're at world 6 hard mode, do 6-1 for DD prints until you can move up, then 7-2 for cruiser prints, and finally 8-3 for battleship prints. The reason being is because at 6-1, gold SG radar prints are available, at 7-2, the 113 AA prints are available, and at 8-3, the bell gun prints are available. Although, do keep in mind if you are able to clear a tough hard, a hard mode world consistently, like world 8, then don't need to farm 6-1 if you need SG radars. Just simply do 8-1 because it gives 20 core data versus world 6's 16 core data. My method is just for min-maxing once again, so no need to do this if you don't want to. Just farm whatever world you'd like, just make sure you farm at the highest level. I made a video for this a while back that I advise players to watch beforehand. But once you're at end game and you're done leveling most of your ships, aside from a few of them, then oil efficiency is king. What this means is you want to use as little oil as possible while still clearing the sorties and content. By doing this, you are getting more EXP and more resources per oil. Since oil is a fixed resource for free to play and low paying players, you can only get so much of them per day, so it is best to use the amount at its fullest. Some of the greatest oil efficiency ships are Shoho. Castin, Downs, Phoenix, Erebus, and Terror. You can throw these girls into your fleets to fill slots because the minimum for any fleet is 1-1 one, one, and they will keep the cost of your fleet low to fill the needs, whether it is to farm for an event map or to level a specific ship. Core data is an extra currency in a game that can be farmed in hard mode. The higher the hard mode world, the more it yields, so do the highest one possible to yield more core data. In the core data shop is where you go to exchange for goods you want. In terms of priority, it comes down to what kind of player you want to be. But for the general rule of thumb, the rainbow type 93 auxiliary is always a good choice because it is a flat 100 torpedo stats and you'd want about 12 of these as an absolute end game player that wants to min max. Type 1 piercing shells has a second highest priority as it is one of the core auxiliaries for backliner battleships and battle cruisers because of its 15 hit accuracy and the 25% crit damage increase. The super heavy shells can be a third highest priority but can be slotted out by SG radars or high performance fire control radars for those that own it. It's good for its flat 70 firepower mainly since the 8 critical strike chance is not that great. The gold swordfish can also be used for carriers such as formidable, centaur and arc royal if you want the extra utility for slows but not recommend it if you do not care so much. Everything else is either up for preference or not worth the core data, but at this point you should already be exhausted with the rainbow auxiliary and the shells, so you should have very little spares to, regardless. Running out a ship isn't as difficult as you may think, it's getting the prints to max them out that is the hard part. 
Again, I spoke about this in another guide that I want you guys to watch if this is the topic of your interest. If you want the fastest progression possible for prints, then you're going to have to, a lot of cubes on hand, aka whaling, and this is the fastest route possible. However, I don't advise this mainly because cubes have a lot of other usage outside of just PR missions. The second best method would be only doing the coin missions, which yields the second best results after the cube missions. In order to stay on top of this one, you must spend about 15,000 coins a day on PR missions alone, which is possible through daily raids and oil commissions. However, it doesn't leave you much breathing room on coins for anything else. By doing this method, you're, you're going to have to farm a map that yields a lot of coins as well, such as 7-2 to stay on top of it. However, I can guarantee you that this method is very fast compared to the next method coming up, which is doing free and clearing X map missions. I do not advise doing the clearing X map mission as much because the yield is rather poor, but better than the free ones. You don't want to do this one because you spend oil clearing a map X amount of times when it can be spent on using other things such as grinding for a ship or grinding for coins. So doing the free missions is better than doing the X mission ones. Fleet tech is used for additional stats just like cats and lets you get stronger the more ships you unlock, the more ships you unmax limit break, and the more ships you cap at 120. This is an absolute end game player's focus as the stats are not game changing but it's enough to give you a little bit of boost for that min maxing. This is absolute end game for any players since rolling for a best in slot cat is near impossible. The best way to go about these cats if you are fixated on, on getting them is to make sure you are done with absolutely everything that involves coins for progression. You'll be funneling about 21,000 coins a day on these and for an average endgame player you make about 20,000 coins a day and more if you farm 7-2. The stats on cats for the most part are insignificant but if you do roll an extremely good one it does hold value. They are about the same as slapping an ult ring on the ship that isn't 200 finny which is extremely good for endgame min-maxers. Each player has their own playstyle, so each roll holds different values for them. However, since the stats are RNG, it doesn't really matter because RNG determines whether you get something good or something you don't get, get that's good. SSR casts also have different talents and again depends on the playstyle of the player to determine which is good and which is bad. Me personally, the best casts are Antenna, Lime, Pound for HMS players, and Oscar. And it's best for you to wait until you've received a good cat or a decent one before opening all your purple and blue cat boxes because they will take up your space in your inventory and that is best left for opening SSR cats. That's the end of my guide. Everything I can possibly think of because I'm mentally exhausted right now is in this guide and I've given you guys every little bit of my knowledge on the general side that I know about in this game. I kept gear and ships analysis out of this primarily because those topics can be videos on their own and my gear knowledge is not absolute the greatest but it is good enough for me to understand. If you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and do remember to watch those old videos I've talked about they will be in the description for you to look at um, and other segments as well for you to go in depth for those things that I've discussed in this video. Until the next major update, this guide should cover pretty much everything that I can think of for all general basics for the game and some extras for a little bit of the min-maxers that are out there. And for those that are curious on how to play the game and what to do on a daily basis, that me personally, that I do. So anyways, that is all. Good luck to everyone out there and welcome to all the new players that are coming to Azure Lane. Whether you're from the PS4 side or the anime side, welcome, welcome guys. You're in for an amazingly fun game, and I'll be here for a while.